Hi guys, I'm Darren and in this video we'll be looking at how to flash firmware on your FreeSky receivers. So from that intro you can sort of tell that this is going to apply to both EFOS and OpenTX. It will probably apply to EdgeTX too using the OpenTX stuff. I've not actually looked at EdgeTX yet but I'd imagine they're very similar for this process as well. So this can be used for any transmitter that can run a FreeSky receiver. So what we're going to do is first look at what firmware we need to download and take it from there. So what we're going to do is head over to the bench and we'll talk about a few little niggles. Okay, so for this demo, I'm going to be using this R8 Pro receiver, mainly because it's going to be nice and simple to update. This process will work on any X-Series onwards receiver. Yeah, just where you access this S port might be slightly different. Older sort of D8 and older than that still receivers usually are quite different to update. So I'm going to leave that because, to be honest, they're redundant now pretty much and most people are using either the x series or have moved on to uh, newer things so the first things to look out for on a receiver is the word access if it says access it's going to be running the access firmware some receivers can run older firmwares as well and some older receivers can run access when it's not listed so what we'll do is we'll, we'll take a look at a receiver like that on the website just to show how to know which firmware to run. It depends also on what your transmitter can do. If your transmitter is capable of using Access, then I would 100% recommend switching over to Access. It works really nicely. And if it is a, you know, a proper Access receiver, you have more cool stuff like over the air updates and changing settings without actually needing, needing to flash different firmwares, that sort of stuff. So it has moved on and does have features worth having. What I should actually say is with some smaller receivers, obviously this isn't going to be written on them. So you'll need to check the website. The other thing to look for is this OTA. But if it's over the air capable, we can do an over the air update. I will be showing both processes uh, just in case there's an issue because I have had OTA receivers in the past where I couldn't do an OTA update initially, but I could after doing a cable flash. So what I'll be doing is I'll be showing the over the air update using this uh, EFOS transmitter. So we'll see how it works under EFOS. And then I'll be doing the cable update using this OpenTX transmitter. So we will get experience of seeing both in action, but the only thing difference is the menus uh, and the menu layout and what i'll do is show you on the menu where the other things are they, they're going to be sat right under each other what we'll do is we'll head over to the free sky site and we'll look at how to download the firmware right so here we are at the root of the free sky website you can see it's just freesky-rc.com you can go about it a few ways you can go to download but i prefer going to products because i just find it quicker to actually get to what you're looking for um, so what we'll do is we'll just click on access and this will list all the access receivers. So you've got the current lineup. If you go back a page, if a discontinued stuff, they'll come up in a new list. Now, what you may spot on this page, for, for example, is the RXSR. Now, this was originally an X series receiver. So originally on ACCST. Uh, but you can actually flash access to it. In fact, my iNav test flight controller has an RXSR on it, which is using access. But we can take a look at that later. And what I'll do first is we'll just head over and look at the um, R8 Pro. So we'll just click on R8 Pro. And you, you can see all the icons on the website. So we can see this one is access and over the air. But if you want to confirm you can go to the features you can see here over the air all archer receivers are access only i've seen a few posts with people buying archer receivers hoping to use them with stuff like a radio master tx16s uh, you you can't you can only use access with well you can only use 2.4 access with free sky transmitters 900 megahertz there is a hack to get other transmitters to be able to use access but not for 2.4 
So if you want to use an Archer receiver, you have to use a free sky transmitter. So anyway, what we need to do is click on downloads and go to the download page. And what we want is this drop down here for firmware. So what we'll do is just click on download that. I won't click the button because I've already downloaded it. So I can show you the exact file later. And this, you just want the latest version. And of course, what you also want to do is make sure that your transmitter has the latest RF module firmware too, just to make sure it's compatible with all the features on the newer versions of the firmware. We've just downloaded 2.1.8. I know that I'm on 2.1.9 on the X20, so we're all good with the latest update. I've done a video on how to update the internal module firmware for the X20 and other EFOS transmitters, so I'll leave that up in the top corner. But what we'll do, we'll just carry on. And while we're here, let's have a look at the uh, RXSR. So let's have a quick look. And what you'll see on the overview is it says access compatible. So it can run access despite this being um, an uh, ACCST receiver. And there, there are a few like that. So there's, I think the RX6, uh, the RX4, and for some reason in my head, I've got the GRXs, so the, the uh, glider receivers. So now we're again in the download page and what we do is scroll down and we can see here we've got firmware for both Access or D16, which is ACCST. And what you're, you'll see here is there is the historical, which is basically version one ACCST. And then there's the new, which is version two. Now there've been a lot of sort of misguidance in the past about version 2 saying if you install version 2 you lose d8 and lr12 that's absolute nonsense back there behind the wing of the mini drac i have a tyrannus x9d plus that is running accst version 2 and still has d8 and lr12 the deciding factor for whether you have D8 and LR12 is the actual module itself. If you're running an XJT module, so like that Tyrannus, for example, then you'll be fine. If you if you had D8 and LR12 before, if you update to ACCST version 2, you'll still have D8 and LR12. If you have a transmitter with an IRSM module like the uh, X10S Express, you won't have D8 and uh, LR12, but then it never did support it. So that's the thing. If you've got it, you won't lose it. If you haven't got it, you won't gain it. <laughs> that's just a way of looking at it. But this is a long winded way of saying there's no reason other than the amount of receivers that you may have to update. There's no reason to not update to ACCST version two. In fact, it does fix quite an important bug with the RF side of things. And whether you choose to believe it or not, there were a lot of pilots in Europe who had issues that came to light because of more devices on the 2.4 band. A lot of these pilots were flying expensive molded gliders and stuff like that. They're all within sort of line of sight, but it's not just LBT that the bug affects. It's just that it was shown up better in that area. So if you're running ACCST, I would highly recommend updating to version two. And if you're using multi protocol, you can still do it. You just use the FR Sky X2 protocol and instead of just the FR Sky X or X1, whichever it is, and that is using ACCST version two. So there's no reason at all not to update to it. And in fact, it just makes life easier because when you're downloading firmware, you just click on ACCST and download the latest one. It's, it just makes things so much simpler. So, if we we're going to be updating my RXSR, I would now download this firmware, stick it on the transmitter, which I'll show you how to do in a sec, and then update the, the receiver with that. So hopefully that explains which firmwares you need. So if you can support access, run access. It's just a no brainer. If you're using ACCST, use version two. There's no reason not to at all. So we've downloaded our file, which is on the desktop here. So now what I'm going to do is show on the EFOS transmitter, just because there's been loads of examples in the past with OpenTX, but plugging in a, receiver, a transmitter and copying the files is going to be very, very similar for both. Okay, so the, what we need to do is put it in bootloader. So hold down the enter button and click the power button. It's now in bootloader mode. 
With OpenTX, you just need to turn your transmitter on. Plug in the USB. We're now USB plugged in. At that point on OpenTX, it'll pop up a box saying if you want to use the USB for a joystick or use it for the SD card, you want to select use it for the SD card. That's, that's the only differences with plugging in. So now what we need to do is open up Windows Explorer and we'll have two devices that weren't there before. One is the flash for the transmitter. The other one is the SD card. Now I've got in the habit now of just renaming the SD card to have the transmitter name and SD. So it's really obvious. So you, you don't even have to think about it. If you're running OpenTX, you'll have a firmware folder already. But if you're running EFOS and this is your first time installing firmware, you won't have a folder called firmware. But just um, right click on the card and create a new folder. You can make as many folders as you want, call them what you want. It doesn't matter. Um, but firmware is the standard for where to put firmware. And you can see inside of firmware, a lot of people just dump all the files in there I've actually created folders inside it to be a bit more organized. So I've got my Archer uh, folder. And then what you do is just open up your zip file and then copy the firmware across. So I've already got it on there. I'll just replace it. So that's all you need to do. This file section here is basically identical on OpenTX and EFOS. The, even the folder structure for firmware is the same. So just find your firmware folder and then put your firmware file in that folder how you, how you like. So what we'll do now is head back to the workbench because that's where the magic happens. So let's get our transmitter on. Right, I've turned the sound down because we don't really need it. What we're going to do is head into uh, the system and then file manager. Now what I'd, I'd to control everything from here so it's a bit easier for you guys. But we're going to scroll down to firmware. We'll go to receivers and Archer. Of course, if you've put it somewhere different, you need to go to where you've put it. Now, if you what you want to do is find the firmware you want to install and click the button. If at this point you're updating via a cable, what you need to do is choose the flash external device option, and that will install the firmware via the cable. But we're going to do the over the air update. So what I'm going to do is click flash by over the air. And at that point, you just plug in the receiver Then you select the receiver. The name obviously will be different for your receiver. Uh, it tells you the current version and then you click yes and it will install the latest version. So that's all there is to it. That's the over the air. And the beauty about this is you can do it if it's buried in the model because all you need to do is plug it in and give it power and after that it will do everything for you so that's that's why one of the reasons why i really like access is it just makes stuff like this a hell of a lot more simple but we'll just let this go on and we'll come back and take a look at flashing with a cable just in case this process doesn't work like i say i've only ever had it not work when it's been a first flash of a firmware on a brand new receiver which isn't running a version that's quite compatible with the one that's on my transmitter but you flash it with the cable and then after that the over the air will work absolutely fine there we go the flash is complete we can just click close and then just back out to the start and that's it we can do what we want unplug the trans or the receiver we're all done stick it in the model fly it so now what we're going to do is take a look at the process using a cable now when you get your receiver you'll get a little bag like this which has a cable that's going to look similar to this um, other receivers uh, it may look a bit more like this so this one is for the archer r6 so it's a slight, slightly different cable but they all come in the bags. And this is basically a plug for your S port. So you'll see on this receiver, it's down here and on other receivers, it's in a slightly different place. So what we want to do is plug that in. For some reason, these always seem a little bit tight the first time. There we go. 
So now we have our smart port connection on the receiver. So ne next what we need to do is plug it into this transmitter. So a lot of more recent transmitters actually have an S port on there. So you're, you're looking for uh, that logo there. It's like the S with like a line in the middle of it. That's your S port plug. Right. Uh, older transmitters like the X9D, you can flash it using the JR pins, but you have to be very careful because the power and ground are actually switched. I'll put a diagram up on screen, but you can't just plug that straight into it. You need to modify the cable before you can use that. Otherwise, you will kill your receiver. So we're going to use smart port. So just plug it in here. You can see this this plug has actually got the nice little groove on, so you can't get it the wrong way around. But the signal wire, so the white wire, is next to that little tab. That's the easy way to remember it. But that one has actually got a proper, I think, Futaba uh, servo plug so you you can't get them the wrong way around so i've copied the firmware the exact same firmware to this transmitter you know it's the only thing we don't need is the back on this one because we're powering it through the radio and again th this radio because it's access is capable of over the air updates it's only accst you'll always need to do with a cable but access with over the air you can do it like this Right, so what we're going to do is head into the system menu. We're going to page to the SD card. All right, sorry about that. I've turned the backlight off now, so hopefully that's more readable. But anyway, we want to go to the SDHC card uh, area along this, this top band in the system menu. And then we want our firmware folder. So we'll click into that, click on receivers, you can see I've organized it the same as on my uh, X20. And then the Archer-X 2.1.8 firmware. Of course, you want to select the correct firmware for whatever receiver you're trying to flash. Now, this time, it's not just a quick click. You long click it. And you'll see it says flash S port device. So we're going to click that. Now, sometimes it does have an issue. If it does and it can't write to it, just try clicking it again and you'll find usually that the second time you do it it works absolutely flawlessly but yeah there's just an odd glitch where sometimes it doesn't refresh properly or something and it doesn't write first time but the second time i've never had an issue and there we go flash successful so press enter back out then we're done if you get to this screen and you're looking to flash your device over the air, but there's no option for over the air updates, it's likely because your RF module is not turned on. So what we need to do is exit out and go to the model and then go to the either internal or external RF module. Now with this transmitter, if you're doing an over the air update for access on 2.4, you just need to turn on your ISRM internal access module if you're uh, flashing on 900 megahertz for r9 you'll need to obviously set this to r9 access and that will give you the options to flash over the air so just to show you that we'll go back to our receiver firmware and if i hold down now you can see we have flash rx by internal over the air so there we have it. That is the process done. We've covered both OpenTX and EFOS, and you can see they're both really quite simple to update the firmware, if, whether you're using over the air or via a cable. And as for speed, I think over the air might even be slightly quicker. Um, it did seem to take a little bit longer when using the cable to flash the R8 Pro. But um, yeah, it's a simple process, and I really hope this video helped you out. So thank you very much for watching. Fly models like you stole them. I'll see you on the next one.